In this demonstration, you're going to learn how to manipulate the time slider that's present in ArcGIS Pro anytime you have time enabled a map. In previous demonstrations, uh, we've looked at this wildfire points layer. Uh, we've gone in and time enabled the layer by selecting a specific uh, column from the wildfire points layer. Uh, if I right click on it, go to properties, uh, you'll notice that we've set fire discovery date and time as the time field that we'll use under layer properties time. All that was covered uh, in our first demonstration in this uh, particular series on using uh, temporal data in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, so we just defined a single field, that being the fire discovery date and time, uh, to time enable uh, the map. Now at that point, of course, the time slider becomes active in the map. You also get the time tab that shows up uh, in the ribbon. In the, the last demonstration that we did, we showed you how to configure this time slider by setting things like the, the time full extent, uh, the current time for the slider, uh, the toggle button that enables or disables time, uh, we looked at step properties, snapping properties, and so this particular demonstration is going to go into the actual time slider itself, how you use the controls, uh, both on the time slider as well as the, uh, the time tab. So on the time slider itself, you can see right now, of course, we've set our time, our full extent uh, as being from 1-1-2018 to 1-1-2019, and again, this is for displaying our wildfire points. We also display the current time as a time span of one month. Uh, you can say that, that was set here under current time. The On the time slider itself, this dark blue line represents the current uh, visible time period, which is one month. And that uh, is going to correspond to what you see on the map. So all these points that you see on the map were wildfires that were discovered in that one month time period uh, from January the 1st, 2018 to January the 31st, 2018. Now I have several options here as far as <clears throat> navigating uh, or using the controls on the display. Uh, the buttons, this button on the far right hand side is the same thing as the button on the playback menu which is step forward. All right, this allows you to incrementally step forward. So if I click that button, you'll notice that it moves uh, forward by whatever time span I've selected, which in this case is one month. So now I'm going to February uh, and displaying data from February. So this is an incremental move forward uh, of course, you can uh, incrementally zoom back as well if you need to. Now, if you click the uh, the arrow button, this is play all steps, right? And so these buttons are the same here as they are on the uh, the time tab. So if you click uh, on the uh, play all steps, that will automatically advance uh, through the different time periods. Again, one month at a time in this case. Stops at the end and then it repicks, picks back up and continues to go forward, right? And that's because I'm on repeat here. So if you look on my time tab, you'll notice that I have repeat selected. That means when it reaches the end of that time period, it automatically starts over. Now to disable this, I can click on repeat again. That will disable it. I'll have to stop it there. As long as it's playing, it's going to continue whatever, uh, whatever it was doing. So these are little toggle buttons, right? So repeat, reverse allows you to go from, let me just turn it on, show you kind of how that works. I'll reset this real quick. So the way that uh, reverse works is that uh, on the, the time slider, it's going to reach the end of the time period, and then it's going to go back. So it goes from left to right, then right to left. So if I click play here, and you can see you also have a pause button here if you need to pause the uh, display. It reaches the end, now it goes back. All right, so that's what reverse does, right? It goes left to right, and then it doesn't stop. It just goes straight from, from right to left. All right, now you can also speed up or slow down uh, the playback. So if I set it a little bit slower, now I click play. Now it'll move a little slower as we go forward in time. You can see it's a noticeable change there, making it considerably slower, which sometimes you want, right? Sometimes you want to speed up or slow down depending upon your data sets and how long it takes you to kind of look at those data sets and take a look at you know, the patterns that are going on with your data sets. Uh, other options here, right, directionality, right, you can go from, the default is going to be to move from left to right, but, you know, you know if you want to go right to left, uh, you can change that as needed, but uh, we'll leave that direction from left to right. Now, on the slider itself, you can pick the controls up. These little handles can be picked up and moved with your mouse. So, if you just use your mouse, right now I'm holding the left key, left mouse key down, and I'm just dragging, right, and so what I'm doing here is just incrementally 
zooming or zo uh, navigating uh, through the time-based display of the data using my mouse uh, instead of the incremental zooms. Right? And that allows me to, uh, to control it with my mouse as opposed to having to constantly click on uh, step forward or step back. Uh, now you can expand uh, the time span directly from the, from the slider as well. Uh, you'll notice as I mouse over this left handle that uh, my cursor changes. And what I can do is hold the left mouse key down and drag. All right, so if I wanted to, for example, show everything from January to, uh, to the end of March, so the first quarter, I simply drag uh, the arrow there to change that. And then from there, it works just like it did uh, before. Now we're showing the data one quarter at a time. It reaches the end. And now it stops, right? And that's because I don't have a repeat turned on. I'd have to reset that. Uh, now, you also have on the left-hand side of the time slider, you have uh, a time enabled or disabled button. All right, if you click this, you're disabling time. What that does is it resets your time slider to the full extent uh, as you've defined on the time tab. And then you're displaying all data uh, here as well. So you've essentially disabled time, right? And so that, in effect, is going to ensure that all of the points are being displayed as opposed to when I click on time enabled, then we are constricting uh, the display of those points based upon the uh, the current time span. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I need to show you at this point. Uh, so for this uh, series of demonstrations, just to kind of repeat, uh, we showed you how to time enable a map by selecting a layer in the contents pane, going to properties, going to time, and then setting either a single time field or uh, the other option here to keep in mind is that you can select each feature has a start and end type. So you might want to select, um, well, we could select containment as our end date and time, and then fire discovery date and time as our begin. So if you have two fields and you want to display a time range as opposed to a specific point in time, uh, you do have the ability to define a start time field and an end time field. Calculations are done for you automatically in terms of the full time extent. You can make changes here to the, uh, the time interval uh, if you need to do that can also set the time zone. So we covered those types of topics in the first demonstration. As soon as you time enable a layer, right, that's what uh, initiates the creation uh, or the addition of that time slider to your map. Uh, this is saved with the project. So anytime you save your project, you're saving that uh, temporal data as well. Second demonstration that we looked at, we covered the time tab and we looked at the various options here, including uh, things like setting the full extent, setting the current date and time, enabling um, time-based display, step properties, snapping properties, playback properties. So we've covered a lot of ground here with these uh, three demonstrations on uh, working with temporal data. Hope you've enjoyed it. Keep in mind, we also have a, uh, a course, a short course called RGS Pro Shorts course called Working with Temporal Data. Uh, if you want more information on this, uh, that includes um, lectures on, on this topic along with exercises and these demonstrations that we have uh, covered as well. So uh, thank you for joining me.